Hey guys, it's Libby and welcome to my very belated holiday book haul. Um, so if you don't know, I live in Amsterdam. The rest of my family lives in the United States. So it kind of takes a while for things to, to trickle in. Um, uh, so I got some Christmas presents mailed to me, um, but I got the rest from my mom who just came uh, and visited for a week in February. So I finally have my like assembled hoard of Christmas books and birthday books that I can share with you. Um, and we're gonna start with the ones that I got first, which are the ones that I bought myself with gift cards. And as per usual with my book hauls, I will be reading to you the first sentence. So look forward to that. Um, first one, Howard's End by E.M. Forster. I am a big fan of the book Morris. It's probably one of, yeah, I'd say it's top five, top five books. It's real good. It's a real good book. Um, I haven't read anything else by Ian Forster. I do own Room with a View, but I kind of feel like I might want to do a Forster binge fest at some point because his books are quite short. Um, so yeah, I'm just getting the, the other big one. I think Morris Howard's End and Room with a View are the, the three biggest. Uh, the first sentence of this one is, one may as well begin with Helen's letters to her sister. The next one is one that's fairly popular on booktube. You've probably heard of it. It is My Sister, the Serial Killer by Oyinkin Braithwaite. It's about a woman whose sister has like murdered her last three boyfriends, but managed to get away with it. And now the sister is making eyes at the guy our main character likes. Uh-oh. Um, and the first sentence of it is, Eula summons me with these words. Karede, I killed him. Next up, we have a very Libby book. It is Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. And this is seriously hitting the like, um, ingenue in a big isolated house, encounters people whose society she can't quite fathom and like there's a mystery. That's very much me. This book is set largely in the 1960s and our main character, Francis, is like surveying a tumble down country estate and there's another couple who are also staying in that house for some other reasons and there's like a hole in her floorboard so that she can look in at, at the room that they're staying in and I think she becomes obsessed with them. The first sentence of Bitter Orange is, they must think I don't have long left because today they allow the vicar in. And the final one is The Wake by Paul Kingsnorth. This is, what do they call it? Um, a post-apocalyptic novel set a thousand years in the past. So this, um, it's, it is historical fiction, not spec fic. Um, it's about the Norman invasion of England, um, and sort of the, the way that the um, native Anglo-Saxons perceived that event was as an apocalyptic event. So this book is written about it as an apocalyptic event. The plot follows a man named Buckmaster, who um, is an Anglo-Saxon and uh, gets together a band of men to see if they can stop this. Um, and the interesting thing about it is that it's written in what's called a shadow tongue, um, which um, it, the Paul Kingsnorth sort of modernized the I don't, I don't really know which way he went. Either he like modernized old English or he oldified modern English. Um, the, so like the, the grammar is modern, but a lot of the spellings are old English. So I'll read you the first sentence, but I'll also put it on the screen so you can see the way it looks. Uh, in this one special case, I will give you the first two sentences so you can really get a feel of what it's like. Um, the night was clear, though I slept, I seen it. Though I slept, I seen the calm here, the nacht only, the still. But speaking of language and writing, let's move on to the things that other people got for me. Um, we're going to start off with Dreyer's English, an utterly correct guide to clarity and style by Benjamin Dreyer. This is a style guide for how to write. Um, a bit not typical, like, reading material, and I'm not 100% certain that I will read this cover to cover. I may to take it piecemeal. Um, but I've just heard that this is like really good. It's a really good style guide. Um, it's quite long. Um, when I was in college, we used Strunk and White as our style guide and 
it, it wasn't bad, but I certainly take issue with elements of Strunk and White. Um, they rage against the passive voice, which I don't get. And actually, if you read it closely, you will notice that um, in order to disparage the passive voice, they have to use the passive voice. So it's like, mm, looks like it can come in handy sometimes, friends. The first sentence of this book, um, from chapter one, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up Your Prose, is, here's your first challenge. Go a week without writing very, rather, really, quite, in fact. And you can toss in, or that is toss out, just, not in the sense of righteous, but in the sense of merely. And so, in the extremely sense, though as conjunctions go, it's pretty disposable too. And that is not all we have from the world of linguistics. We also have Gretchen McCulloch's Because Internet Understanding the New Rules of Language. This is much more of a sort of sociolinguistics um, based on like how people use writing and speech on the internet. Gretchen McCulloch has appeared at least once, possibly twice, on Lexicon Valley, which is John McWhorter's linguistics podcast that I am a major fangirl of. Um, the first sentence of this book is, Imagine learning to talk from recordings rather than people. Mm. I think you actually can't do that. I think you actually have to learn to talk from people interacting with you and interacting like in the same world as you because if I'm remembering correctly, um, there have been issues with deaf parents. If two deaf parents have a hearing child, um, they will put the child in front of the TV and hope that the child will learn to speak from the TV, but you can't learn to speak from a TV. You need someone in the same space as you. Um, so maybe she'll talk about that. Uh, I guess now I will do my next nonfiction, which is not linguistics. It's a Penguin classic. Um, the Portable Frederick Douglass, which is a collection of the writings of Frederick Douglass. Um, so you may have noticed, I didn't make a whole big deal about it, but I'm sort of doing a project of reading Georgian novels. Um, I'm kind of maybe wrapping that up a little bit over the next like year. So, you know, not anytime soon. But once I'm done with that, I want to focus on um, like, American Renaissance literature, so sort of 1830s to the Civil War, and uh, this be that. This collection includes the entirety of his um, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, his first autobiography, as well as passages from his other two autobiographies. Um, it has his novella, it has some of his speeches, and some of his journalism. A lot of which is pre-Civil War. His first autobiography came out in um, 1845. Uh, I'm going to give you the first sentence of the first chapter. Um, there is a preface, but it was written by somebody else. Um, so chapter one starts, I was born in Tuckahoe, Nil I can't. <laughs> I was born in Tuckahoe near Hillsborough, about 12 miles from Easton in Talbot County, Maryland. And next, why have one Penguin classic when you can have two? This is Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. I've heard Barbara Pym described as sort of a mid-century Jane Austen. Um, this book is set, it's about um, uh, the, the, the excellent sort of woman of the title is a, I don't want to say the word spinster, a single, not young woman. And this book is set post-war in London or like the outskirts of London or also maybe not London maybe just somewhere in England I'm doing great so far um and the, because of all of the bombing there was like a major housing shortage so our heroine is living in an apartment which is two floors which was clearly meant to be one person's dwelling or like one family's dwelling but she's got the top floor and there's other people on the bottom floor and they like share a bathroom um, and it's about her life and uh, the people that she meets. The first sentence is ah you ladies and then we're gonna wrap it up here with something that I don't think I can get all on screen at once. Uh, okay. Ooh. I have inherited the ancestral 
Austen collection. This is a 12 volume collection of Jane Austen's novels, um, some of her like non big six writing and her letters, which were originally given to my great grandmother, Beatrice, by my great grandfather, Bruce. Um, and then they went to my grandmother, and now they are mine. They were given um, uh, Christmas 1941. So, proper old books. And these are um, illustrated uh, editions. So, uh, if you want a, a sample, here is um, from Northanger Abbey. General Tilney seeing Catherine to the door very politely when he thinks that she is an heiress. And that's the haul for this holiday season, finally. Thank you to my lovely family who got me some books. And thank you to everybody else for watching. I'll see you again later.